Well, hello, party people. Uh, I hope that you are ready for an engaging conversation. Let's just start with some deeper introductions. Uh, not long, but deep. So get vulnerable. Tell us something that nobody else would know about you for all, everybody here. JD, let's start with you. Sure. Hi, everyone. How's everyone doing today? We're here at Blockchain Week. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! OK. <laughs> Anyways, uh, for those who don't know, my name is Jared Dillinger. Um, I am the co-captain of Barangay Hinebra. I've been in Web3 now for about two years, feels like 20. I'm sure you guys can all relate to some extent. And um, geez, something you guys don't know about me? I was in the United States Air Force Academy for a while, so a little bit opposite from the military vibes. But um, I'm here with you beautiful people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yang-sung, do you want to jump in? Yeah, so um, nice to see you all. My name is yang Sun, and I am from South Korea, Seoul. Um, just a quick one thing that uh, nobody would know about me would be, I've actually been to multiple like countries and schools, so I moved schools like 10 times during K-12, which kind of made me like have to adjust to like various different like atmosphere or countries um, probably makes me very fit to you know just to the stage right now as well um, that's probably one thing that I would want to tell everyone other intros um, I'll just kind of try to unfold while we speak excellent Daniel yeah so the last year we spent building a community of around 118,000 people and we curate conversations that's why I love you know web3 and bringing in experts to really teach because I would never say I'm an expert. I did used to have 10 piercings. I know, it seems odd with this suit jacket, but thank you. <laughs> you only have nine left? <laughs> Zeneca, please uh, give us some background on yourself. I have zero piercings, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Zeneca, I'm from Australia, living in Munich. I've been in crypto for about 18 months. Uh, NFTs mostly built a community Zen Academy, really focused on education and onboarding people. Um, God, something is tough. Vulnerable. Hmm. I am a recovering alcoholic. There you go. I like that. Nice. Something about me, although this isn't really about me, but I'll throw something in. I cry easily. Last night, I was thinking about today, and I started crying. I was like, I can't believe I'm here. I'm so honored to be a part of this. And uh, I got real emotional. Tears started streaming down my face. There's my vulnerability. So let's dive in. Here is where I want to start. Why is community such an important thing? And why are people talking about it so much in Web3? So why don't we go the other way, and, and maybe a couple of you can answer that, and I have a bunch of questions I want to ask. Yeah, so I mean, I think community is, it's basically a buzzword in Web3 in the NFT space. If you've been in the space for the last 18 months, everyone says community, community, community. And I think it is, it's so important because for the first time ever, we have had a way for individuals to really own part of their digital presence, identity, community, uh, you know, up until now, we've had online communities. They're not a new thing. We've had communities in the real world, in outside of online, and then online forums and games and clans. But for the most part, people in communities were like building up someone else. If you're on YouTube, if you're on you know, wherever you were building your community, you were building value for other platforms. In Web3, you can build value for yourself. So I think that unlock, to me, is one of the most powerful parts of community in Web3. Dan, can you define Web3 community? And how might you define Web3 community outside of a Web2 community or a government community or a, a faith community? What is it that defines a Web3 community? Yeah, so I think enthusiasm is important. I think it's bringing people together for a cause. Web2, Web3, I think these are just terms, like you mentioned. Web3, 
can describe a bunch of different technologies combined as one, but I think it's more than that. I think with Web3, it's, there's a big cause. You have a lot of people that can really succeed, that can win, that never had a chance to in their life, and they see, oh my gosh, I live in this small island in the Philippines. I have the internet. I can participate where before in the 1990s, early 2000s, I could not. So now I'm coming together and then I can meet people from all around the world and we can participate together. I think that's the biggest difference with a Web3 versus before. It's, I think it's way more global. I think everyone is really out, for, out to win together, which I think is great. And it's not everyone for themselves. Yeah, I mean, like he's got all the high level explanations on point. So I just want to add a little bit on like what I think is a Web3 community. Um, I was thinking about like three points, a little bit more like tactical points on top of what he said, um, is that it's comparatively decentralized for one. Um, and then secondly, I think it's a more self-custodial and autonomous in a way that like people actually share incentive like um, you said. Um, third point is something that I wanna kind of bring forth and maybe we can talk about it a little bit more, is that it's inclusive in nature, but it's actually exclusive in format. Um, it's limited to, like, a lot of times, it's limited to, like, certain, like, number of supply. And I think that's an interesting um, aspect of Web3 community. Uh, and uh, maybe, like, we can kind of discuss upon it a little bit more later words um, on how people think about that as well. Um, okay, so I want to add on to Roy and what Dan was saying. So, as you guys may know, I'm an athlete. I'm a professional athlete. I've been playing for well over 15 years, and I've seen the ins and outs of the business, and there are a lot of problems. And in regards to monetizing yourself, getting paid rightfully so, and of course with crypto, you know, that solves a lot of issues. You know, and at least outside of the NBA, most countries for their athletes don't have a players union. There's no, we don't have a, a players association and we are at the helm of these managers and owners. And a lot of the times we get taken advantage of, whether you, you don't know it or you do know it and there's really nothing you can do about it. So I'm here in, in NFTs and crypto and with all these people because I'm a huge advocator for, for sports, you know, for athletes, and um, at least for Web3 and sports, I think they really coincide together in, in regards to, you know, community and, and fandom and bringing people together, right? So I'm all for it, and, you know, I just want to continue learning and continue hang, hanging out with you guys because, shoot, man, this is my first event, and, I mean, I'm having, having a great time so far. But well, we're glad to have you. Can I ask you yeah. to speak into the difference between a Web3 community and the two communities that you spent a lot of time in, the professional athletic world and the military world? So all of these environments have benefits to how they do community, how they do structure, how they engage with one another. Um, what is it that stands out to you about Web3 community that rises above these other communities you've been part of and is there anything that you think the Web3 community could learn from the athletic community or learn from the military community? I I'd like to hear insight on that. Great, that's a great question. Um, okay, so there are a couple parts in this. So for one, yes, there are advantages or things that the Web3 uh, community, if you will, can learn from sports and military. Um, I would say from the military, they pretty much got the infrastructure down in terms of do what you're told, go here, go there, rules, regulations. Obviously, Web3, we have not gotten there yet with all the regulations, so that's still a work in progress. So I would like to think, let's take a little bit of that part from the military side. In terms of sports, um, community, that's the hugest thing in sports, you know? Rivals, us against them. We, we, got, we got more people than you guys, you know, we're gonna kick your butt or, you know, however, which tribal, almost tribalism, right? So I think in that sense, like in Web3, we're just, like Roy was saying, and Dan, we're all about community. Community is really a priority. So I think if 
we can follow the model of sports on how they develop communities, how they galvanize people to come together and root for this star or this team. Um, I would think that would be something that, that Web3 should, should really look into. Young Sun, it, in terms of different cultures, right? So I, I believe you're based in Seoul. Yep. And so you, of course, have insight in terms of that specific geographic location and how they're dealing with this Web3 community in comparison to what you see kind of around the world or here in Manila and specifically, uh, you know, Southeast Asia or what you kind of see with your friends that are over in America. So talk to us a bit about uh, what you found to be true in terms of Web3 communities, where you're from, and what could we all learn from what's being done well in Seoul, and what are you taking away from this environment to bring back home? Yeah, so um, I was actually gonna talk a little bit about um, that, and <laughs> thanks for giving me that question. I think community word itself is actually very historical. We've, we've had communities, I always say like, you know, if you love some people and you gather up, that's a family. It's a community. Um, if you, you know, like, you know, get, gather around with like, you know, like-minded, you know, professionals and form a team, that's a sports club. But in a way, it's also a community. Um, so community in itself, I think, is very universal in that like all human beings want to take part. But like in terms of how, I think is a little bit different across cultures. Um, I think um, Asian culture, uh, more specifically Korea, um, we, we are very, very, very like influenced, um, like we give influence a lot towards each other. So whenever there's something that becomes really hot or like whenever there's something that's trendy, everyone follows. So Korea is known for its like fast followership. You know, like you can see it from, you know, different brands that you see across globes, but also like in fashion too, like when something becomes very trendy, everyone wears it. There's like popular pictures of like clone fashion. We call it clone fashion. Um, so that aspect of like how like fast it permeates into like specific communities of what trend that you follow is something that is very strong um, into um, Korean communities. And I think that's why like it's very easy to initially form um, communities around like, um, you know, there are different communities that form. But I think what we can take away from some Western cultures is that they do a better job of making it sustainable through incentive. Um, there is this sense of like when there's like money involved or there's some incentive involved, like the Korean culture tends to kind of see it in a negative fashion. So what it does is it's all good, you know, like it's all good with each other, but then to a point where someone is doing better than other. And there's, there's some divisive, like, you know, cultures that forms because it's unfair. And I think what Web3 does is to kind of alleviate that, right? And I think some of that comes from the incentive structures that the Western cultures have been kind of like doing pretty well in certain aspects. So I think there's that, the forming of communities and trying to be very communal, I think we can take that away from more of Asian culture. Um, whereas like, you know, incentive schemes or like being able to actually cater to each individuals are better on Western. Um, and that also shows in like, you know, how people treat, you know, like rules. If you go to Korea, like everyone has to wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, it's not the officials that are going to push you. It's actually the people that are going to nudge you. They're going to give you that look. They're going to give you like, they're going to force you. To, they're going to scream at you. It doesn't happen that often in Western countries, right? So I think that there's that difference between the two. And definitely there's that cross-pollination. Uh, what I love about Web3 is that there's that cross-pollination happening between the two uh, within the, the world uh, of Web3. Thanks for that insight. I'd love for the two of you to talk a bit about why should entrepreneurs care? Uh, you know, all, all five of us are entrepreneurial, um, but you know, you just, your wife is Filipino, Kate, and helped put this on, and uh, you're now here in the Philippines, you know, going after a new entrepreneur uh, that you've had it in place for almost a decade, but you know, new opportunities. So as an entrepreneur, why does this matter? Why is the talk about community, which sounds very emotional and very even manipulative, 
right? Like that whole thing. If we're a family, it's like, no, we're a sports team. You do well, you get to play. Otherwise, you're on the bench, you get fired. Uh, so why is community matter from an entrepreneur's perspective? I'd love for both of you to answer that, but Daniel, why don't we start with you? Yeah, so if we look at the stages of influence, originally it was celebrities and it was artists. And then social media came around, it was people that gained following. They got the term influencer. But I truly think that influence is gonna come from communities, because I think we're seeing this a lot in the US. The trust factor of somebody who has a following, I think is going down. I think people are seeing that and they're not, and there's just so many people they're following and like TikTok, they're just swiping up and down and no one's really following an actual individual. What I think is going to happen though is the influence is from the community as well as the community leader because they're looking at this person as, wow, this person was able to bring me together with all these individuals that I love, that are now my family, that I trust. I really listen to this community leader. So when it comes to entrepreneurship and a lot of business owners, they, they, use influential, you know, they use influencers, they use celebrities as their marketing. I think from a marketing standpoint, and we're already seeing this, seek communities, seek community leaders. I think those people can be one of your best ways to market your product. And as cost rise of customer acquisition, it could be the cheapest and best way for you to grow and scale your company. Uh, unlike before, you know, you're trying to pay an influencer an astronomical amount of money. A lot of these community leaders don't really understand their value yet. And you can really grow, and we've done this personally. So I think if you're a business owner, seek a community and really understand how you can add value and how they can add value to your business. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a really great explanation. And I, I was going to touch on the, the marketing aspect because you get together a community uh, of 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 people. Um, they, let's say, use crypto, NFTs, Web3, a, whether it's a DAO or an NFT project, now all of a sudden their incentives are aligned with yours as a business where if, if like let's say Bored Apes, you know, if Bored Apes are out there creating merch and like creating their own Bored and Hungry and, and there's so much building of their own that is helping that Bored Ape brand but it's being done by community members and it's I think a really powerful incentive model to align community members with the founders, the business owners, the entrepreneurs and I think it's only possible with Web3 because you didn't really have this ownership model before. Again, like if someone's a fan of Coca-Cola, no one's out there going, telling everyone, hey, you go drink this Coke or doing their own stuff with the IP because they can't. Now with NFTs, they are going out and telling everyone wearing the merch and I think it's really a powerful unlock. Can we transition to talk a bit about communities that the four of you are a part of? So let me frame it this way. Most people are most critical of themselves, and they're also their biggest cheerleader, right? Like, depending on what's going on in your life, let's just take finances. Like, it's easy to look at your finances and be like, I'm such an idiot, I should have 100 times what I have, I miss these opportunities, I make these bad decisions, what's wrong with me? Or you look at your finances, you might be like, oh, I'm proud of myself, like, I made these really smart decisions, these good moves, I was wise, I was practical. So, we have a tendency to have the strongest emotional, positive, and critical things about things that we're close to. So in that regard, can we just talk about communities that we're a part of and something that we think there's massive room for improvement and something that we think that every other Web3 community could learn from? Uh, so can you maybe start us off? Yeah, something I've been thinking a lot about lately. So I'm going to use Zen Academy, my community. It's the one I'm most involved with and most a part of. And we've been recognizing just how, like we've thought about being, like we position ourselves as being an inclusive community. We want to be the community for everyone. We're focused on education and information. But just because of the demographics of the team, like we're very global, but we all speak English. We're very English speaking. And we generally are not building the bridges or haven't been until recently to communities on a global scale, whether it's in the Philippines, whether it's in Korea, whether it's in Japan, Brazil, Africa, you know, most of the demographics of our community is US, Europe, Australia, you know, traditional Western 
English speaking countries. And I think that Recording in progress. we are now starting to identify the, the power in building bridges multinationally because Recording Web3 stopped. is truly a global movement. And as like, translation tools are improving, I have this wonderful story where I had this Twitter banner created, this artist I commissioned. I'd been talking to him for months. We worked together on a few things. Six months into the relationship, he said he didn't speak Recording a word in English. progress. He was from Thailand and using a Google Translate the entire time. And you know that is the power of Web3. It, it really makes the world even smaller. And I think that, yeah, I would just love to see more communities go global. And that's why it's, it's great to be here and to have so many people from all around the world here. It's really great to see, yeah. So one community, it's not Web3, but Entrepreneurs Organization has really been a crucial part of my wife and I's life. I'd say it's changed our life to the fact that even if we didn't do anything for a whole year, we would still pay. And that's called Entrepreneurs Organization? Yeah. And just because it, it's been so beneficial that like, when it comes to paying dues every year, it's not even a question. The value is so high. But I think when it comes to what might be different is it's actually very difficult and challenging to find communities from, from what I see. There's really no place where I can go and say, what is every single community? I feel like they're very scattered and you have to usually know somebody who tells you, hey, I'm in this community. So I hope one day there is some sort of way or tool or something that can be used that can help people be more introduced beyond like a Facebook group, you know, beyond something beyond that. Uh, because I feel like that for me is, has been a challenge. Yeah, um, I actually want to mention um, w the community that I'm running, um, but also a community that I first kind of entered in, into Web3. So I actually entered into Web3 through purchasing a doodle. <laughs> and, um, like, and also, right now, I have my own community that I'm trying to build together with uh, it locally called Hello Web3. Um, like judging by its name, I think what's really important, I think Zen, Zeneca has already kind of mentioned a little bit, is like um, Web3 community is exciting because of the fact that it is new. And when it is new, it gives you that feeling of your first day in school. When you don't have any prejudice, when you're like open to meeting new people, that's why you mix up different classes, different people from different industries, like we meet each other, and you think that's, that's kind of like the beauty of the current Web3. Given that, I think what's important and what might apply to a lot of uh, people that are on, like, on stage and in audience is that um, we need to do the hello. Like we need to be actually going to people that are shy, that are in this like, you know, seat and say hi. That kind of brings everything together, right? So um, when I go to an event, um, I see people that comes to me, they don't know me, but they say hi, and they introduce me to this aspect of like their NFT community or Web3 community or whatnot. And I think that's what is really important right now. When there are so many new people that are entering, their first impression is something that I think we can take away for every community that you guys also want to build. Um, I know there's big aspirations that you want to do, but focus on your first impression and try to be very welcoming to people that are coming in. Um, that, that's something that I want to say. Um, yeah, these are all great, great answers. So I'm going to piggyback off you guys again, if you don't mind. <laughs> no, but uh, look, so these guys nailed it right on the bat, Roy and Dan. Just infrastructure and organization is really something we are trying to figure out as we're all building out our projects or our communities and um, still haven't really figured it out. Like, you know, for my case, I'm building out a project where I'm getting basketball players from all over Asia. And people who know basketball, like in the basketball community, it's, it's quite small. We're all cool with each other, more or less. So, you know, I'm talking to guys from Japan or Indonesia, Malaysia, Korea, Philippines, Taiwan, and it's, trust me, it's a little difficult trying to break down the the language barrier. Um, yes, we have basketball as our common language, or, but it's still hard. And what Dan was saying in terms of there's communities all over the place and we really don't have a direction on where to go and how to find it. Just kind of get lucky and just have it fall on your lap. Um, when I first got into crypto and NFTs, I got lucky. 
Um, Cyber Kongs in Sandbox fell on my lap just because I bought some land and hey, I, Cyber Kongs, what is that? I got a couple of those and then, hey, here I am, I got lucky, right? So um, I know we're still building out, I know we're still early, more or less, but infrastructure organization, something we really gotta knock on. Well, friends, thank you for coming and sharing. Uh, you've come to give to this community. Uh, can we thank these guys for being here and for sharing with us? See you next year.